In Creo Parametric, you can use the extend command to select edges in order to make a surface larger. In the previous video, we took a look at selecting references and the different types that you can choose. In this video, we're going to concentrate on the measurements tab where we will take a look at the measure options, the distance types, and having variable distances. So first off, let me take my canopy model. I'm gonna hide my copy geometry quilt. And I'm gonna start off by selecting this edge in the model. And then from the mini toolbar, I could use the extend command. Be aware that the extend command is also available from the editing group in the ribbon. So I will click on extend. And here you can see that we have our distance that we can grab and we can move it along over there. I'm going to go to the measurements tab in the ribbon. And the first thing is this drop down list in the bottom left, which is really easy to miss. Here are the two choices that you have. You can extend along the extended surface, and that is the default option, but you can also extend along a selected plane. I'm gonna turn on my datum plane display, and let me rotate. Oops, accidentally hit the middle mouse button to complete the feature. Let me edit the definition of that. I'm gonna collapse my model tree again. And so let me rotate the model a little bit more carefully this time. So again, on the measurements tab, we have this drop down list. And right now I am extending along the uh, selected surface for my new extent. If I go to the drop down list here, we can change to extending the distance in a selected plane. Now I'm gonna pick this particular plane that I already have visible. You can see that the preview already goes away. Let me start dragging this back in. You can see that there is a significant difference in the result when I'm using a distance measure in a selected plane. And this particular plane is sort of like normal to the surface that I am extending upon. So for example, let me select over here and then middle mouse button. You can see the surface that we get in that particular situation. Let me select the edit feature again, this time, I'll, or excuse me, the extend feature, edit to definition. And this time let's go back to the measurements tab and change to along the selected surface. You can see that especially the geometry down along the edge ends up being very different. All right, so that is the first choice that we have. Now let's take a look at some of the distance types. Here we can see that we have the distance. You can change the dimension from the ribbon, from here in the tab, and also in the graphics area. But let's say that I want to measure the distance either normal to the edge or along the edge. And a good way of thinking of the difference between this drop-down list and this drop-down list is that when you're using the measure options, that's sort of like when you're viewing the distance from the side, whereas this is more when you're viewing the distance straight on. And in this particular situation, when I choose normal to edge and then switch to a long edge, there's not that much of a visible difference in the situation. So I'm gonna cancel out of here and jump over to a slightly different model. Let me go over to this particular one. And this particular surface has a lot of curviness and waviness in it. And I'm gonna start off by selecting this edge of the surface. And then once again, I can use the extend command from the mini toolbar. Right now we don't have a preview. Let me grab this and make the distance a little bit smaller until we can see a preview of a surface that would be extended. And in this particular situation, it might help if I go to my front view. And so right now, if we go to the measurements tab, we are measuring a distance normal to the edge. And if I'm measuring normal to the edge, let me move down where I can see the entire preview. You can see that we can go out over here right now or a little bit over 80. Okay, so it seems to go away if we try to extend a distance beyond around 90 or so, uh, just because of the option that we're using. We'll go to the different 
options and methods that you have in the next video. But when we are using the same option for the uh, method, there's a limit in this particular situation of around 90 that we can do when we're measuring the distance normal to the edge. But instead we can measure along the edge and when I'm measuring along the edge, you can see that there is a big difference in terms of the orientation of that drag handle. You'll see that it moves up and to the right. And in this particular situation, if I'm trying to extend a distance along the edge, looks like we're about to, about to get like 110 or so, 112 before the preview starts to go away. So again, that is the difference between normal to edge and along the edge. And again, it's more when you are viewing sort of straight on. Now you'll notice that there are two other different options over here. For those two options, I am going to go to a different model to demonstrate that one. So here I have the bottom part of the fuselage that uh, was part of the canopy in the other model that I used. And here I have a gap that I want to fill in by extending this edge. So let me actually even zoom in some more. Let me select this edge in the model. And once again, I will choose the extend command from the mini toolbar. Let me grab this distance and drag it along. And here you can see a preview, but you can even start seeing as I'm extending, we're ending up with a little bit of a gap between my extended surface and the existing geometry. If I go beyond the length of the original surface, you can see that as well. Let me even try hitting the check mark and you can see that we have that gap and maybe even a little bit of an overlap. Let me edit definition of that particular feature and let's go to the options tab, or excuse me, the measurements tab. And instead of normal to edge, let's go to the vertex parallel. And with to the vertex parallel, it's going to go along this one-sided edge until it finds the very next vertex and connects it. And it's going to make this side edge parallel to the original selected edge. And so if I middle mouse button to complete the feature, there you can see the extended surface and there aren't even any patches in this quilt. Let me go back to the extend feature and then edit definition. And let's go to the measurements tab. This time I will go to the drop down list. And instead of using two vertex parallel, I'm going to use two vertex tangent. And before I do that, let me zoom in right over here so you can see a little bit more detail of the edge that was generated with two vertex parallel. It actually extended this a little bit before I was able to make this parallel to the original edge. But if I change this from two vertex parallel to two vertex tangent, well, there is a big change to the shape of the edge. If I zoom out, it doesn't look that big, but when I zoom in, it does. And so it makes it tangent to this adjoining edge, and it's not fully parallel to the original surface, or excuse me, the original edge down at the bottom. It is maintaining that tangency there at the interface between this side edge. So I can hit the check mark. And there we have our extended surface with that two vertex tangent. All right, so that is good for the different distance types. Now let's take a look at the third part of this video where we will examine some variable distances. So let me hop over to, oops, let me hop over to my first model that I was using. Let me grab that extend feature and edit its definition. And so let me go to the measurements tab. I want to change this to along the surface. And I am going to also change my references. Instead of just using that first portion of the edge, I'm going to use the shift key to grab this other little segment. And I want to use a big distance to start off with on this end. 
I'm gonna use a value of 400. When I hit 400, the preview goes away just because I am using the same method. Again, in the next video, I will go into the differences between these four different methods. If I use tangent, it will be more forgiving me, forgiving and allow me to use that distance of 400. So that is good, but let's go back to the measurements tab. And with the measurements tab, you can also have different extension distances at different locations along those different edges. And so if I want to add another drag handle for the distance, all I have to do is right mouse button over this list, this little window here, and then choose the add button. And it gives me a drag handle. And by default, it is putting it 50% along the length of this particular edge. Be aware if I move it over close over here, it's not both references, it was just that first part of the one by one chain that it uses the length ratio for. If I grab this and drag it over to this edge, it is now using the length ratio of this smaller edge segment. But I'm gonna grab this and drag it, come here. Make sure I'm getting the drag handle and grab it all the way to the end. And so let me change this to a different value. Maybe at that vertex on the end, I want it to have a value of 280. And by the way, if you take a look in the measurements tab underneath location, here it says that it is located at N2. That's where that particular drag handle is. Okay, let's take a look at a second method of locating a drag handle. Let me hold down the right mouse button and choose add. And this time I'm gonna grab this and I'm going to drag the drag handle and I'm gonna let it snap right into that vertex. And you'll notice that the symbol changed from that circle to a diamond. And so it is snapped right into that vertex over there. So I could choose a different distance for this particular location. Let me punch in a value of 360. And you can see how it is interpolating from one point to another in order to affect the shape along that extended edge. Okay, for the next one, let's actually take a look at using a length ratio. Let me hold down the right mouse button and I will choose the add button. And here I have it located over here and I'm gonna drag it. I'm gonna drag over to, well, let's use about over there. And so with the length ratio, what it's doing is it's taking this particular segment and it is normalizing it between zero at one end of the segment and one at the other end of the segment. Be aware again, like I pointed out earlier, this length ratio is not for the entire combined chain, it's just for this particular edge uh, that is part of the chain. And so I can double click on the dimension and change it. Maybe I want it 0.3 for 30% along the length of that particular edge. And it's using a value of 360. Hey, once again, we can plug in a new value that we want to use. And so that's good for these particular four locations for my extension distance. But then I decided I want to have another location. And I want to use length ratio, but I want it to be length ratio of the entire curve chain, not just one segment. In that particular situation, well, I might have to change, might have to create some additional geometry. So I'm gonna hit the middle mouse button to complete that extend feature for now. I'm gonna grab the insert here arrow and drag it up above to start inserting some features. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna select these two different edges and then make a composite curve. And to do that, I'm gonna hold down the shift key to grab that one by one chain. And then I can use the copy and then paste button. When I go to paste it, we can make an exact copy of those curves into a new curve or with approximate, well, it'll take it and make it curvature continuous, but I wanna use an exact copy. So I will hit the check mark. And with that copy still selected, if I go to create a datum point, 
it is going to be located on that composite curve. And right now is using an offset of zero. From this drop down list, you could use a real distance or a length ratio. Let's say I wanted it halfway along the length of that composite curve. Well, I will use a value of 0.5 and then click the OK button. And then let me grab this and get out of insert mode. And now I can go back to my extend feature and edit definition. And now I will go back to my measurements tab and let me right mouse click and add another drag handle. And I can put my mouse over there and I can move it. And as I'm dragging this, if I hold down the shift key, I can snap into references like that datum point that I created. And for this particular distance, well, I wanna use a different value. Let me use value of 300 over there. And so now we're getting even more waviness in the shape of the edge for my extension. I'm happy with all of this. So I will hit the middle mouse button in order to complete my feature. So there you have it. That's how you can use the measurements tab in the extend command for selecting different measure options when viewing the measure distance from the side, different distance types when you're viewing more of a straight on approach and having variable distances along the edge that you're extending using either locations for the endpoint, a vertex along the edges, length ratio, or a datum point.